Whether you're a casual or well-rounded enthusiast, catch up with news, reviews, and more from around the circles of pop culture with us. This is Sentaku Media, the axis of anime, gaming, and other otaku interests. Hey everyone, this is Sanjo, your host of the Sentaku Media podcast. This is episode 33 of the Sentaku Media Journal, or season 3, episode 9. Thank you for your patience, and I hope you enjoyed this episode, and today, as always, we're going to talk about anime, gaming, and news from everything in between, so if you enjoy that kind of stuff, you're in the right place, and we are going to talk about, like, uh, I guess some follow-up stuff from our last episode, so as you listen to this, it might be back-to-back episodes, which is kind of I guess rare for us because um, I keep saying in every episode that we were supposed to come back on May 25th, but it was an oversight and I did not realize that the episode, the comeback episode was on a week of Momocon. Uh, So I definitely dropped a ball on that one. So again, I apologize. But again, this is a learning experience. I do this on my own just out of curiosity and interest, strong interest and, you know, a hobby. Yeah, so I do it. Cause it's fun, and also would like to give back to people who also enjoy the same things I do. So, I hope you are enjoying this show, and I appreciate your patience and dedication, as always. But, just to kick off our episode, we're going to talk about a little bit of community news. So, we do have a Twitter, uh, and, uh, WordPress blog. Well, WordPress blog, uh, WordPress blog. So, we do have a blog, of course, if you are not aware of it, so... Uh, SentakuMedia.com is where you can find a lot of our updates, and I know uh, updates are kind of few and far between, but that's normally where we put our uh, show notes, and actually the show notes have been kind of late too, so I apologize for the inconvenience, uh, so I'm trying to just get the episodes out, but I do have the show notes like ready, I just gotta format it and post it, but right this, at this moment I'm just trying to like record as much as I can and then get them out and then focus on that since we're behind on schedule. So I don't want to do what I did last season, was just do a very short episode about one thing and then call it actually when I try to catch up on what I can. And also in between editing, so when I uh, replay the episode just to cut out anything that was inappropriate uh, for air, I uh, normally play that while I'm playing The Sims 4, which is... Something I've uh, gotten back into the habit of playing again. So, like, I, I find myself playing it more than I do Final Fantasy fourteen, And, like, right now, Final Fantasy fourteen in particular, we're kind of between patches right now. So, definitely, uh, maybe one day I'll play that, but mostly it's The Sims 4. But also, um, some other things I've been getting into lately. So, um, uh, gaming-wise, I've been playing visual novels as well, but I'm trying to save that for our live streams. But we'll talk about live streams later. But yeah, so as far as announcement goes, community-wise, I went off topic again. But uh, So we're going to introduce something new to Sentaku Media, and this is probably something that should have been done a while ago, or it, ha- it has, it's just not really been very prominent as far as what it's about. But we're going to do a community member spotlight series. So these are going to be uh, added every quarter to SentakuMedia.com, and this highlights important members of our community, whether it's listening to our podcast, reading our blog, and leaving comments, uh, leaving comments on our YouTube channel, or watching us on Twitch. And it's anything that involves Sentaku Media, they are to be recognized for their achievements and to defining what Sentaku Media it's all about. So, we're going to write it in the form of a blog post and why they deserve the recognition. So, we're going to do it every quarterly. So, uh, just to give you an idea what quarterly is, it's like every few months in a year. So, uh, as I record this, it's going towards the end of June, right? So, this is actually technically the end of the second quarter of 2022. Uh, so, our next one might be until September. But, before we end out June, we're going to recognize... The person that has helped us the most uh, during, I guess, in the past couple of months. So, May, actually. So, um, we're actually, I'm not going to, I'm going to uh, save spoilers for, you know, right now. But the only way you can find out is go to SentakuMedia.com and find out who that person is. And if you want to be featured, all you got to do is start leaving comments 
uh, show up to our Twitch streams and, you know, basically stand out, be yourself, and you'll get recognized. So, uh, right now, there's no incentive to doing that. I kind of wanted to do that as a gift back. I'm like, you are definitely noticed, and we appreciate you reaching out. So, and on Twitch, we actually uh, have some improvement on our Twitch channel. So, definitely, that's where the idea comes in mind, too, as far as recognizing uh, for any viewers. But definitely, we want to recognize any listeners or uh, people that come in on the blog. So, you have to basically make yourself known if you would like that share of the spotlight. So, yeah, that's coming up on SentakaMedia.com. Also, um, nothing else going on right now in the Discord. I'm holding back on doing any offense for the Discord because I know the uh, activity's kind of dropped off a bit. So I might do something else a little different in the future, but right now it's mostly just a hub for like sharing other information as far as like news is uh, concerned. So we'll try to uh, improve things on there in the future, but um. We are interested in having help, like moderators and people to help promote the blog as well. Oh, not just the blog, but the community as a whole. So if you have something you're interested in, uh, feel free to send me a DM on the server or uh, use our contact form on SentakuMedia.com or send me a DM on Twitter. There's anything with Sanjo Chan or Sentaku Media that... Uh, is uh, any of our actual social networks that we we have on uh, sensacomedia.com slash socials. That's where you can hit us up on. Uh, also, don't forget to check out our Hover account, which is uh, the TikTok for gamers, basically. So, like, TikTok, like, con- gaming content on TikTok is kind of like, eh, but uh, Hover, the, uh, marketing the platform as the uh, short-form video f- uh, platform, for gamers so we have previous uh twitch stream clips on our channel as well as select uh clips from our previous live streams so if that's something you're interested in be sure to check it out and give us a follow and like and share our content but that's also where the incentive comes in at as being a recognized member of the community as well so there's some more options to put out there so don't forget to hit us up uh sentakumedia.com slash socials and our discord sentakumedia.com as well. And if you type in sentakomedia.com, that gives you the invite link. So I promise you that it's actually the Discord link to uh, get access to the server. And it's just an easy way to get there instead of having to type in the gobbledygook that you get in the invite code. Unless you have Nitro. I think if you have Nitro or something, or if you get a, a server boost or something, you get uh, an actual fanity URL. But until we do that, that's actually the easiest way we can get there. So, uh, all right, we're going to go ahead and get into episode 33. We got a lot to talk about today. So, I will see you here in a little bit after a message from our sponsors. Welcome back to episode 33 of the Sentaku Media Journal. And we are going to kick off this episode talking about an update concerning Dragon Ball Super Superhero. So, I have the latest figures from the first week of the Japanese release, but also we do have news and a new trailer I talk about with the North American release that Crunchyroll is currently behind, and I know it's kind of weird considering that it's normally Funimation, but due to the merger earlier this year, instead of Funimation, everything is Crunchyroll, so yeah, it's really weird. So, I don't know how many people think that Hey, is Funimation out of business? I'm like, uh, no, they just basically got real too big, really too big for a lot of people, and, you know, in opinions of a lot of people, because that was a huge topic of debate uh, back when the news broke. Not last year, but this year when it was made official. But anyway, getting into the uh, details of the release outside of Japan, coming, uh, starting in August, rather, it's... Uh, going to be on August 19th, so just outside of Japan in general, it's August 18th, but um, the film will be open in the US, Canada, the UK, and Ireland on the 19th in particular, but uh, the article on Anime News Network has a rundown of when to expect the release in respective countries, so on August 18th, we have Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Colombia, Central America, Ecuador, Bolivia, Uruguay, and Paraguay. And then on 19th, we had the U.S., Canada, 
Uh, besides the U.S., Canada, the countries that we mentioned briefly, we also have South Africa, Zambia, and Vietnam. On August 26th, India and Indonesia will see the release of the film, while on August 30th, Malaysia and Brunei will get a superhero. And the next day in the Philippines, it will launch there as well on the 31st of August. On September 1st, Singapore will uh, screen the film as well. September 8th, Taiwan. September 15th, South Korea. And September 29th, Thailand, Hong Kong, and Macau. And also for the English dub uh, in particular. So, of course, all all our uh, favorites are coming back. But as far as, like, new voice talent concerns, actually, one of them is a huge surprise. So, apparently, the voice... Okay, so I want to um, just... If you haven't heard it yet. So, this is only for people who haven't heard it yet. So, of course, uh, if you listen to this, you I can't hear you. But, uh, so... One of the characters, let me find out who the character is. So if you at least pay attention to the, uh, any of, like, the teasers, the, uh, character designs, the, the, uh, character, whatchamacallit, the character design teasers for the movie. So one of the characters, Magenta, is voiced by a iconic voice actor that voices an, well, rather, well, he has an iconic voice actor that voices an iconic mascot of a video game. So, of course, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, maybe Sonic, because Sonic is a big deal now, but no, 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 it's not actually anything of Sega, it's actually Mario. So, Mario, the voice of Magenta is actually Charles Marinette, or Marinette, I don't know, or Marinette. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but yes, he's going to be voice of Magenta, and I forgot who that was exactly, I think that's, of course, one of the older guys, I think, I think, I looked at this before, and I'm like, yeah, I think that fits the character, but yeah, I'm curious to see how he, you know, uh, performs this role outside of what we're normally used to, so yes, the voice of Mario is voicing Magenta. So, that's exciting. He was actually at Momocon this past year, but I didn't get a chance to uh, see him. But that's just, you know, uh, <laughs> considering, like, a lot of people were like, oh, oh my gosh, like, a lot of people that actually met him, they were like, oh my gosh, I want to get hear him again outside of that. But it's pretty cool that he's going to be a uh, voice in Dragon Ball Superhero. But uh, for as far as the other characters go, we have Sack Aguilar, as Dr. Hito, Alex Lee as Gamma 1, and Cena Robinson as Gamma 2, and Jason Marnoka as Carmine, and as far as I know, I don't see anything, but no, we have our you know, normals, uh, Kyle Hebert, Sean Schimmel, Chris Sabat, uh, but a few other names that you might not recognize, at least I don't, is uh, Robert McCollum as Goten, uh, Kara Edwards as Fidel and Janine Tirado as Pan. Those are the only ones that you may not recognize. At least I don't. So I know uh, over the years, like the voice uh, lineup has changed for some of the characters. Like I know there's that whole thing that went down with a certain voice actor we were not going to talk about right now. But apparently, there's some details revealed about them as far as like what happened to them. They just basically not. Uh, they retired from the voice acting scene so but yes those are your voice cast for dragon ball superhero and i'm looking forward to it and i will have a trailer for it as well in the show notes it's the english dub trailer so get hyped so that is it for that and we're gonna move on to our next piece of news it's another update i don't really have any new stories now although i should technically have a um summer anime lineup thing, but I might be able to do that for our next episode, or summer anime lineup for 2022, I know there's a lot of things to look forward to, and I know that uh, one of the shows I talked about in the last episode was uh, Classroom of the Elite, and that is officially getting a second season, and I think that's going to launch next month uh, on Crunchyroll, so I'm really looking forward to that, but we'll talk about more about the, we'll talk more about the uh, anime lineup for this year in another episode, but This is another episode concerning Dr. Stone, and this is actually coming out very soon as well. So, uh, there was a special live stream that the uh, spinoff 
that involves one of the characters, Ryusui, uh, will hit Japanese TV on July 10th, which is just around the corner. And, of course, this is going to be before Season 3 drops, which is sometime in 2023. And we also have an, um, a new visual and a trailer concerning this character. Now, I don't know if this character was in the manga. I definitely don't remember it in the anime, but I'm, I, I watched the anime, so I'm sure this character won't make any sense to a lot of people, but I'll just watch her. That's a go-along. Uh, but I definitely should read the manga since it's, you know, done. Also, there was an update, too, concerning one of the people involved with Dr. Stone, but that's something... That's a side uh, sidebar right now, but I definitely had to go back to that because that's definitely one of the news pieces I definitely meant to uh, talk about. But definitely have uh, plenty to talk about in the next episode. I got like a backlog of stuff to talk about. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the uh, apparently, so I'm trying to see what else do we have here. That's apparently a collaboration with the National Museum of Nature and Science in Tokyo. Uh, also, reveal. Uh, apparently they're gonna have a mini exhibition with a uh, Senku engine again, rather sorry, a uh, character audio guys, themed goods, and more, which will be from June twenty first uh, until September fourth. And yeah, so basically a lot of uh science stuff to be ha- held concerning Doctor Stone, but definitely for the um anime. Uh, anything of the anime in 2022 is, you know, good for me. I'm looking forward to it. And as far as the manga, like, definitely don't spoil it for us anime watchers. We'll get there at some point. So, bear with me. And lastly, the last story we have concerns Anime Expo. So, yes, Anime Expo is seriously returning for real, not in the form of a digital event as we had in the last couple of years, but an actual in-person event, which is always on the 4th of July weekend. But for those that were wanting to go or curious, uh, well, I guess at this point, I don't know if it's hard, how hard is it to get a, a, a hotel and book a flight to LA, or if you're in LA, how hard is it to get a room? But there was some controversy concerning their, uh, measures the precautionary measures concerning COVID-19 and initially they actually scrapped the requirement of showing proof of vaccination or negative COVID-19 test so let's think about that like Anime Expo they have their numbers in the six digits right I mean I think at least in the six digits yeah it's the biggest anime con in the U.S. And just like I know, Cal it's in California, and I think that I know compared to some states, I don't think they've done a good job as far as like curbing like any like curbing their COVID cases. But no, it's still this is still a huge event, and there's still a chance of it. Like it's still out there, yo. Like it's another. I know this. It's still rapping. It's still rapping. So no, it's not quite safe yet to do away with uh, limitations like that, and also. Uh, I believe it was Anime Central. Anime Central, when they had their event back in middle of May, they actually just scrapped that completely like a week before the con, which, again, it wasn't a good look. And I don't know what the outcome of that was. But, yeah, definitely not a good idea for Anime Expo. And they had announced it, I think it was like a, I think it was like a week apart from the announcements that they, uh, went back on it so yeah but anyway the uh, negative test is for you those curious it said it must be taken within 72 hours of the convention and they also (laughs) stated that their update was final concerning the requirements and guidelines so um i read some of the uh hold on let me pull this up for y'all just to see what the comments said I mean, not concerning the, um, you know, obvious, uh, thoughts about, like, not going, but just some, something that's interesting. So, one comment by a user in the, uh, ANN forums, they said that it's still odd to me that in more recent months that there has been this collective mentality of, oh, well, even people that I know took it seriously, both online and personally, have seemingly stopped caring. More than once they have gotten COVID and acknowledged that they let their guard down and didn't wear a mask at an event. 
Thankfully, the vaccine did its thing and meant that they didn't have severe symptoms, but it's at least an example of how the risks are still there, yes. And uh, I'm trying to see what else is there. Another comment said that it's both still better, and especially for indoor fence that involves, say, 100,000 people crammed together so tightly in hallways and lines they can barely move. And even with the vaccine mandate, I was hesitant about going to traditionally overcrowded parts of Anime Expo like Artist Alley. Without the vaccine mandate and a mask mandate that's likely to be poorly enforced, especially in crowded warm spaces, I'm certain. I'm not certain about attending any part of AX. And lastly, just a brief comment saying that one person canceled their tickets. They had bought literally the day before the announcement uh, the original of the original post. It said that they were barely convinced to go, even with the precautions in place. But like, eh, hell no. But, of course, this was reinstated. So, but it's it's up to you whether you want to go. But I know I definitely won't be going anytime this year. Actually, I don't, I don't think I'll be going into 2024, to be honest. Because, so, before COVID happened, I was actually wanting to go in um, 2020. But, you know, after being on my high of going to KatsuCon, I was like, yeah, let's go, uh to another bigger con but i'm like nope i mean we couldn't go anyway but this year was a possibility but definitely like no this is this is a year for recovery you know for other things as well but also one thing about the mask uh enforcement too like uh so from most recent experience and this is something i talked about on twitch during our momocon 2022 recap so uh momocon actually didn't require their attendees to show proof of vaccination, but they definitely enforce masks to the point of, like, there's this one girl that was with Momocon that was chasing down a dude that, like, straight up didn't want to wear a mask. And also, by the way, everyone in the exhibitor hall wore a mask. So when you go down the exhibit hall escalators, they have uh, people that ha- uh, that are involved with the uh, third-party security, uh, event security staff, they were, you know, how they normally tell people to, uh, badges up, please, badges up, please, you know, like that, um, they also told them, so, uh, badges up, mask up, they would do that, and if they didn't wear a mask, they would stop them and pull them aside, and, uh, they had a table, uh, where prop check was located, and they would provide masks for people to wear, and then they can proceed down to the, the common area, towards the exhibit hall which you know the exhibit hall at Mumukan is actually like a wall it's an adventure because not only you get down to that one escalator area you go down like another series of escalators and eventually make your way through the gaming hall and then eventually the dealer's room it's it's an adventure but anyway uh that aside so this guy like how was he not stopped so this guy um his friend he had it was him and his friend his friend was wearing a mask but he wasn't so, when he went down the escalators, he had to have been stopped and said, you know, um, you know, he, that he had to wear a mask. So, he probably grabbed one, that's because he was told to, and then probably when he got down the escalators, he probably took it off and threw it away. Or maybe he just managed to walk away from the security guards before they noticed him. Um, but, at one part, on uh, during our... Walk. I think this was one Sunday or Saturday of Momo. And that's when it happened. So um, there was this girl. She was on a mission. She had a, a sign held up that said, uh, "Mask uh, are strongly enforced at Momocon," and then it had a Momocon logo. So it looked like she was someone uh, associated with the con staff. But no, she had that sign up. She had a fanny pack with mask, uh, you know, lined up. And, like, yeah, she was, like, looking, like, she was, like, uh, yeah, she was on a mission. You can tell she was on a mission. She was probably, like, looking, she looked at me, she looked at the person in front of me, and then, you know, make sure everyone was wearing a mask, which was definitely, you know, everyone had it on, except for this one guy that she stumbled across, and, uh, she said, hey, sir, uh, you need to have a mask on, and she was, like, uh, he was, like, uh, no, no, thank you, I don't need one, and she was, like, oh, hey, sir, and she was, like, on him, and, like, he was trying to run away from him, from her. <laughs> he was trying to run away from him, but like still, um, you know that was intense. But de- definitely, 
I'm you know glad that they were actually on it. And it's up to you whether she was in the wrong or not. We're not going to talk about that today, but just to, go to show you, this is, you know, we're talking, like I said, I know this whole masking thing and vaccine thing has been like politicized in certain countries, but definitely we're in it for the interests of safety of people. So I'm sorry if you disagree with what the girl did, but. Like, definitely, a, a kudos to that girl for actually, you know, making sure this event runs smoothly. So, anyway, yeah, so I don't know how much of that is going to go on, on at a anime expo, considering they have had many people. It's probably going to be at least a few dozen of those uh, girls <laughs> at a anime expo, but we'll see. I mean, well, I won't be able to see, but I'm, like, curious to see how, you know, what other people's opinion were of it. So, yes. So, yes, you'll be, I guess, it'll be a little safer uh, now that they got that rule in pl- back in place. So, uh, if you're going to Anime Expo, have fun and definitely stay safe and don't get dehydrated because even though, I don't know how it is in California, it was really hot there, but definitely, like, here in the South, it's like, <sighs> like please just make it stop this is like the hottest summer i've you know, been through since i've been the 15 years i've lived here but anyway uh have fun at anime expo and we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next segment to kick off our gaming news segment we're gonna actually cover something that we meant to talk about when we made our return and our first episode of the second half of season three and it's big news, so some of you probably already know about it already, but in case you've been living under a rug, there was a huge reveal event back in early April. This is actually around the week that we launched uh, our mid-season finale concerning the next Kingdom Hearts game, and that next Kingdom Hearts game has been officially confirmed along with the trailer, which is Kingdom Hearts 4. So, um, if you've seen a trailer already, then you know what to expect, but if you haven't, I'll gonna go over this article that actually, like, emerged a few days after the game reveal. So, a lot of things, uh, just to recap, though, a lot of things have changed for Sora compared to what we've seen in previous games, and Sora looks actually, you know, well, Sora's an adult, at this point, I think. <laughs> I think at this point, the game has been on long enough that it's basically an adult. Well, I guess, like, young adult, to be exact. I guess, like, maybe 18 or something. But, yeah, definitely he he's old enough to own the apartment he apparently lives in. And also, apparently they dished the uh, big bulky shoes like he normally wears from the first few games. But this whole article is actually about the apartment. That was inspired in a trailer, and apparently it actually exists in Tokyo. So the article is from Polygon, and the title is Kingdom Hearts Fan Stocks Sora Find His Real World Department in Tokyo. So when the reveal trailer dropped, fans dissected the trailer for clues about uh, the possible inclusion of a Star Wars a Star World, uh, sorry, Star Wars inspired world, and Sora's, uh, you know, of course, this new footwear that we talked about a bit. But they found the real world luxury apartment building where Sora might uh, reside in in Tokyo. But also, they mentioned the game's afterworld is a qua, uh, quadratum. Quadratum uh, is effectively a recreation of the Japanese metropolis. I haven't played Kingdom Hearts 3 yet, so please don't spoil me on it, so, like, everything, I'm, like, behind. Considering how long Kingdom Hearts 3 took to came out, I'm, like, actually behind when I do own the game, but that's something to, that's something that we might play on our uh, future streams, so stay tuned, (laughs) but anyway, so, uh, according to the article on Polygon, based on some crowdsourced sleuthing by Tokyo-based Switch streamer Audrey, or, uh, as she's known by on Twitter as well, Aitakimochi, a self-described Square Enix fangirl, Sora appears to have a swank pad in the Aoyama neighborhood of Tokyo. Aoyama, or Aoyama, I'm sorry, Aoyama. Aoyama is a wealthy and stylish part of town, and Sora's rent is commensurate with the area. And uh, Audrey 
uh, dug up what appears to be the actual apartment used in, as a model for this trailer, and it costs a shy of two thousand dollars a month to rent. About a million dollars if Sora wanted to actually buy it. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. So yeah, definitely everything looks uh real in this. Oh yeah, some uh, I guess some, uh, some more details on the story to finish off the the uh, the uh, article. They said that uh they use the to find it they use landmarks using Google Maps Street View, and apparently the apartment building that was found is called Regno Raffine, or Raffine. Uh, in this your typical condo style building. So it likely has a one or two bedroom apartment, but the real draws at the balcony and all the natural sunlight pouring into it. So I actually you know I'm sure that's like some kind of like inspiration there for some kind of like I don't know. I guess it's like I'm sure people recreated this either in um I'm, I got two games in mind. Uh, Sims 4 or King... Uh, not King... Minecraft. Minecraft. So Minecraft is what came to mind. So, um... But, again, you know, a lot of uh, apartments like this, especially in Asia, they look really nice. Like, um... I don't know, like, in Korea, when we were in Korea, there were some really nice apartment buildings. Like, not the ones you see in... I mean, I guess the ones you would see in the K-dramas... But you gotta think of what the rent is there like. But of course, this is Japan. We're talking about uh, according to the Kingdom Hearts uh, story. So of course, their price, uh, their uh, I guess their you know way of living is a little higher compared to Korea or maybe on part of the United States. Unfortunately, at least now with the way things are. But yeah, so it does look really nice. Um, but uh, <laughs> too bad, Sora. Um, I don't know what's going to become of it, so he might not live there for very much longer based on what's going to happen. I probably uh, gave a foreshadow spoiler, spoiler, so I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> but anyway, just in t- uh, going back to the story of Kingdom Hearts 4 as a whole, since it was announced during our break and it slipped my uh, mind. So, everyone's back. Sora, Donald, and Goofy are back, and the uh, back... Uh, I guess around October 10th, to be exact, they had a 20th anniversary live stream for the Kingdom Hearts franchise. And in the trailer, Square Enix calls this an epic new storyline named The Lost Master Art. So, this is where the trailer introduces the Quadratum, which, you know, has a nice apartment building. But also, looking at the trailers, like he. Like, it's in real life, so everything, like, you see Heartless in real life, uh, and I'm busy of a bustling metropolis, and, like, everyone's like, what the hell's going on? And then you see the people from organization, the, in their organization 13, uh, outfits. But yeah, <laughs> so yeah, Kingdom Hearts for finally, like, let's just see how long it takes them to come out with this, considering how long it was. For them to, um, you know, come out with the third one. So, uh, fingers crossed, maybe winter 2024, possibly, maybe summer 2024. Because we have Final Fantasy 16 to look forward to as well. So, I think we talked about that in a previous episode. So, uh, yeah, so little when, when Final Fantasy, uh, when Square Enix, big name Square Enix title at a time. Speaking of Final Fantasy. So, our next news concerns Final Fantasy fourteen, and we're going to be talking about fourteen and sixteen quite a bit. I mean, we've already talked about fourteen already as a, a, a staple here on our show since I played Final Fantasy fourteen a whole lot. Uh, but sixteen as well because uh, Yoshi, Yoshida Naoki is in charge of both games. And uh, if you missed last week's episode of Final Fantasy 16, it's pretty much playable from beginning to end. It's just more of like making sure everything goes according to plan because Yoshi does a perfectionist and he actually cares about uh, the community. So that's really like, you know, number one, that's a, that's a win in my book. Like uh, just 
to talk about it briefly. I think I've mentioned it in a previous episode, but I don't know if I ever, ever had a chance to, like, talk about it properly in an episode. But there was an uh, a video on YouTube where uh, someone compared the devs for World of Warcraft and the devs of Final Fantasy XIV about just how much they care about their community. So one of them was, uh, I think, when Endwalker, when it was announced that it would be delayed by two weeks, Yoshi P actually, like, tried really hard to hold back tears. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, some people would say that's a little uh, overkill, but no, like, seriously, this dude cares about his own, his work and his community and the people behind it and you felt really bad and you and, you know he bowed in forgiveness and it was really touching just to see that uh much humility from him and then now go back to the world of warcraft devs um someone asked uh, i don't know i think it's the same video i think the same in that same moment but basically uh they went to a video uh, where they were talking about the latest expansion pack for WoW, I guess. Trying to compare them from the latest expansion pack for 14 and the latest expansion pack for WoW. So someone asked, why do you nerf uh, Warlock so much? And one of the devs says, we just rather you not play Demonology. <laughs> That's their best response. That's their only response. And then we go, meanwhile, if you ask something like that about something in 14, you should... uh." gives you an honest breakdown and say that we hate doing this but you know they provide a reason why instead of like <laughs> brushing it off but um yeah that's just really something but if you've seen that then yeah you know what i'm talking about but i will link it in the uh description uh show notes uh for y'all to check out if you missed it but we're gonna talk about final fantasy 14 and this concerns the upcoming patch news so right now we're between patches so 6.1 came out back in April while we were off. So, yay. <laughs> and, um, of course, you know, with each patch content involving MSQ, it's really short. So, it's not really no more than, um, like 10 quests. It's usually 10 quests long. So, uh, but it still felt like there's more to, you know, we're still missing out on a whole bunch, but we're about to get, uh, some more content very soon. So, um, before we get on to 6.2, we also have 6.15, which came out uh, at the beginning of June, which added the custom deliveries for a certain a mother of a certain set of characters that I'm not going to mention because of spoilers. Um, and also, I think they brought back the Hildebrand quest. So, I mean, not really brought back, but rather to have a new series of quests because uh, Hildebrand for those that are out of the loop so Hildebrand I think was the a character that was introduced in 1.0 but he has had quests I think from A Realm Reborn and Heaven Sword but it's been a minute since we've had any quests from him up until now so you get to see more of him and I've only played through like a whole one set of the quests but the second set, I guess, after Heaven Sword, any Heaven Sword ever, I think, whenever it came out, I haven't played through that yet, so that'd be quite a bit. I got some more content waiting for me, then basically. So I'm kind of like in between. I usually play like maybe once a week now, since I'm between patches, and I really need to find a reason to play uh, more again and catch up. I, I finally finished Pandemonium. Pandemonium, I think, yeah, Pandemonium uh, in one. Pandemonium went in, rather, I guess how you say it, but I had to do other quests um, at some point. But anyway, uh, so 1.5, uh, 1.15 is uh, the most recent one, but 1. Point, no, 6.18 6, uh, 6. is next. 6.18 is the one that everyone's waiting for, where we'd be able to finally travel between data centers. So that is the one of interest. Um, I think they're also, with this one, they're adding a new data center uh, in f for the Japanese players. I think it's called Meteor. And because of that, they have to, like, rebalance the server distribution between the, the, the data centers they have for the Japan service. So, yeah. So, there's that. 
But yeah, but soon we'll be able to get to travel and see our buddies uh, on another data center. So I got got a, uh, some friends I used to play WoW with who are actually on Gilgamesh, which is on the uh, either. Yeah, I think it's on the either data center. And I'm normally on Primal. I'm on Fanfret. For those who are curious, I'm on Fanfret. And what's funny is that when I when um right before they i think before shadowbringers came out they actually uh i think gilgamesh used to be in the same data center as famfret but they separated it and i'm like dang it are you serious <laughs> so now that will be changed so i can get to see my buddies again like i keep in touch with them on discord but of course you know like actual playing with them like i do have an alt on gilgamesh but i'm like after putting all that time into uh, putting, you know, uh, in my uh, putting that time into my character on uh, Found Friend. I'm like, why? But anyway, I'm sorry for the life story, but just to get on with it, so the live letter is actually coming out very soon, which is what we're talking about. I went way off topic, but uh, I probably should start a Final Fantasy 14 podcast, but uh, so the live letter is going to be out on July 1st, which is on Friday. And if you're on the Eastern time zone, it's going to be 7 a.m. So be sure to set your alarms and then that way you'll find out more information about 6.2. Then uh, 6.1, uh, 6.18 rather comes out on July 5th, I believe. Yes, it's July 5th. So it's right after the 4th of July weekend. Uh, so, yay. Lots of stuff to look forward to. But for uh, 6.2 info that will be on the live letter, it will be, I think, as normally the way they do it, they uh, don't have English translation as it's spoken, but when they have information up on the slides, it's usually bilingual. So, yeah, there you go. So, I, I know I took all that time to explain about 14 and then now I finally give you information, so I'm sorry. But yeah, like seriously, would you all like to hear a Final Fantasy XIV podcast? Like, so just a l- briefly, I'm going to try to go ahead and get through this, wrap this up as soon as I can. So um, when I relaunched in Taco Media, I attempted to start another progress, a series of a progress blog posts, which was inspired from the original conception of Sintakume, uh, where I kept uh, updated to everyone of my progress playing World of Warcraft or maybe Final Fantasy XI. So I started doing that again, but I just lost the spark. I just, I couldn't bring it ab- about me to actually do that again. I mean, I've done it uh, before. Like, I mean, I've done it before. So we have like at least three episodes up of this uh, Iriosa Journal. But I think I enlisted them because I'm like, no, I'm not satisfied with this anymore. And I try doing like maybe very like maybe once a year updates concerning my progress playing it but I'm like i just can't bring it bring myself to do that but i might do a podcast again in podcast format probably not video that will save me this way it will save me time but anyway i'm sorry to that so too long didn't listen uh final fantasy 14 6.2 details drops on july 1st uh 6.18 drops on july 5th there you go so i apologize for that but if you uh enter if you actually listen through all this thank you so much for your patience, but now it is actually time to go to our next story, which I think is actually our last story for the gaming segment. So to conclude our gaming news segment, we're going to provide you an update on a story that we talked about in our last episode concerning the newly launched PlayStation Plus subscription tiers where you are able to play classic playstation 1 2 and 3 games and some on psp as well i think at least i guess the ports of any of those psp games but we actually have an idea of what's going to be on here which by the time you listen to this should be out already but there's some like caveats to this and actually a win a huge win for a lot of these uh, features that they mentioned so i'm pretty sure if you if you haven't heard about this yet and then we're still curious about it and you you know now you probably convinced that yeah this is definitely a win so uh one of the biggest things they talked about was the director's cut of resident evil which was originally released on the ps1 and that's like the 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 best version of resident evil that you can buy so yes resident evil director's cut is playable on the ps4 and ps5 
Uh, so a lot of that, though, is something you can buy separately without having the platinum. What's it? The platinum? Yes, a plat, a premium. Sorry, the pl- the premium account. If you have a PlayStation Plus premium, you do not have to buy these separately. So you have to buy these separately. Uh, so right now they have Apex, Ape Escape, Disney, Pixar, Toy Story 2, Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue, Hot Shots Golf, IT and Killers Your Cube, Jumping Flash, Mr. Driller, um, Apes Odyssey, Siphon Filter, Taken 2, Wild Arms, Worms Armageddon, and Worms World Party. Uh, of course, you know, includes Resident Evil's Director's Cut. So yeah, if you don't have the premium membership tier, if you don't have a membership, a premium membership tier, you can buy them separately. But 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 but, and this is actually a positive but. <laughs> um, don't get your mind in the gutter. But uh, so if you've recent, if you previously purchased these on a PSP or PS3, that's a PS1 classic. Guess what? You'll be able to download them without having to buy it again. Yes. Yes. I was like, yes. I'm like, please, Sony, please do it right. And they did. So uh, as of recording this, I actually went and downloaded Siphon Filter. So Siphon Filter is actually a game I bought on uh, as a PS1 classic. So I actually own the actually original version of it as well on the game disc. But yeah, Siphon Filter is a game I was able to download. With my essential membership. So good. Good deal. But apparently. uh, There was some kind of caveat too. With a director's cut. So I think it's only available. If you have the premium account. So that was a weird thing. Buy it. Uh, and I think actually a few games, so I think Taken 2, Mr. Driller, and Resident Evil Directors could require a premium subscription. So, yes, there's no way around that, unfortunately. But I wonder if you've ever, if, if they had Taken 2, I think they had Taken 2 as a, one of those uh, PS3 games. But, if you don't have premium, will you be able to download it? I'm curious. But, um, also, uh, some of these games, I'm trying to see, there's some more details about this, it's like a lot to take in, so, oh yeah, PS2 games, that's what it was, so PS2 games, uh, they only have Jack and Daxter, Dark Cloud, uh, I think that are, like, I think it's on there already, or at least about to be, uh, but they have someone mentioned in this article that on the PS3 front they have Tokyo Jungle, but it's only locked to the premium subscription. And then they do have a text-based list on their website, on the the PlayStation website of what games you can play uh, under the premium tier. But it's a lot to take in now. So there's a game you're curious about, chances are it might be on there. So definitely uh, worth checking out if you are curious to see if your favorite's on there. But definitely Siphon Filter is like one of my favorite games. It was like one of those uh, games. I was like, you know, on the Metal Gear Solid kick. So that was like one of the next games I bought. So Metal Gear Solid and Mission Impossible and GoldenEye, kind of in that era. So I played that. Played that and I think, uh, yeah, the second one. I played the second one. (laughs) <laughs> and yeah, so a lot, a lot of memories. So that's what game I'll probably play in the future. Uh, probably off stream though. But anyway, that's all for gaming news. Uh, I think I've rambled on a, a whole lot on this, but I'll try not to do it. Well, of course, it's a podcast. It's my podcast. I do whatever I want. But um, but yeah, I'll try to actually keep it short. But no, Final Fantasy fourteen podcast sounds uh, an actual good idea. Actually, I've legit thought of it, but. It might actually happen, but we'll see. So anyway, that is it for gaming news. We'll see you here in a little bit for entertainment and interest news. So before we move on to the rest of our entertainment news articles, we're going to talk about something that you probably have heard of already, but I figured now it would be worth mentioning here too. 
And I figure instead of putting it in the anime news, I think it would be best to put it in entertainment as well because, you know, it. I think this person in particular, uh, you know, did uh, did talent in uh, other forms of media as well, especially those who are into you know the anime uh, fandom and gaming is in particular. So we're gonna talk about uh, voice actor Billy. Cabinets. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but it was back in April, May, I believe, where he made an announcement that he was undergoing therapy uh, for stage four colon cancer, and uh, he was involved with a lot of voices. I think he was a voice of... Uh, one of the JoJo's and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in particular, but yeah, he you've definitely heard his name, he's also I think he did a voice of a character in Persona 5 Royal and even the artist the character designer of Persona 5 did a uh, doodle of one of his characters and basically says to get well and was really touching so considering you know, stage 4 cancer anything that's usually you know, the last, the dire stage of cancer is usually means that the person, uh, you know, has very limited time. So it seems that things, you know, were, you know, getting well, but unfortunately in the middle of close to middle round, uh, recently in the last couple of weeks, he lost a battle with colon cancer. So, uh, Billy, um, he was, I think, 34 or 35. He was very young, and that's way too young to lose someone to cancer. So, as they say, fuck cancer. So, I really wanted to say that, and I really hate to break that, but I really wanted to include that because, you know... He voiced like, one of our characters, like, maybe you don't watch dub. English up anime a whole lot, but I wanted to include that just so that, you know, he's not forgotten. So, yes, fuck Hanster, and also the, our condolences to his colleagues and his family and his fans. And may you rest in peace. So, just a little bit of, a, um, I guess, a refresher, even for myself, and it's very complicated. This next story uh, is actually kind of sad, but also, considering the details of this person involved, it's like, oh yeah, I forgot that happened, and I know it was up in the air for a while, but this involves uh, this band by the name of Old Codex, and... Uh, it was announced, uh, back, uh, I think in, yeah, back in May. No, they actually, I think they actually stopped their activities as of May 31st. So it was, uh, one of our stories that we've been trying to catch up on. But yeah, so, Old Codex has been disbanded as of May 31st. And they're actually going to terminate their official website and Twitter on August 31st. And their last song they released, This Fading Blue, is was actually featured as the theme song for the second part of uh, Free's Final Stroke anime film that was released back in April. And their fan club closed in March. So it was inevitable. But uh, just to give you a refresher, this, one of the... Uh, it's a duo, right? It's, yeah, it's a two-member group. And give you a refresher who one of those members are is actually uh Ta- Tatsuhisa Suzuki. So Tatsuhisa Suzuki is the voice of shoot, I don't know what character like any other prolific uh bleh. sorry for my stumble. So any important anime characters that come out there. So I know he recently did the voice of Noctis. I think he was the voice of Noctis in uh, Final Fantasy fifteen. And at one point he was the voice of Raihan in Pokemon Journeys. But 
I think he was under a lot of controversy. He had to step back from the entertainment industry for a bit because I think it came out that he had an affair with his wife. Something happened, and I want to be sure. So if I don't edit this out, then that's what happened. So uh, because I'm speaking, uh, I'm recording this as I go along with very limited data of uh, internet access. So if I don't edit this out, then it means it was right. But yeah, so the group disbanded, and also they did post messages about, you know, how they feel, and thank you for y'all paying attention to us all these years. Apparently they've been around for 12 years. Uh, the site in particular, they wrote, we would like to express our sincere appreciation to all of our fans who have formerly watched and supported our activities for over the past 12 years, and to all our stakeholders who have supported us. And we hope that you will continue to support our members as they move forward to, or oh, rather, on their new paths. So, Tatsuhisa, uh, Tatsuhisa in particular, or his stage name, Tattoo, which is T-A underscore and the number two, says on the site, no matter what I write, all I can say is thank you. Thank you so much for a wonderful time. I hope that everyone who reads this will find happiness in whatever form it takes for a long time to come and that our work will remain somewhere in their hearts, even if only for a moment. And the uh, his bandmate, Yorke, adds to the staff who kindly and strongly accepted me as selfish and trial-like person. Thank you very much. And to the fans, you have never let go of my hand at any time and have watched over me to the very end. You who are reading this are my proudest fan in the world. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'll never forget the moment we were able to dream together. So that is their parting messages for the group. Hey, hello, it's me from the future. <laughs> so uh, remember when I said that if what I said was incorrect about what happened to Tatsuhisa Suzuki about him having an affair on his wife, which contributed to him being out of the public eye. So yes, I was right. So I do have an, I managed to pull up an article that explains a little bit more about that. So uh, this was actually back in March, which was two months before it was announced that they were discontinuing activities. Uh, so, yeah, it was announced back in March that he was going to resume full activities since August 2021, which was when uh, the controversy emerged about the uh, the incident. So, he uh, was accused of cheating on his wife, who, happen- who, ha- uh, who actually happens to be Lisa, who has, you know, known for a lot of uh, anime's, uh, anime theme songs. Suzuki and I'm Enterprise that claimed the hiatus was due to, quote, physical and mental fatigue, unquote. And I'm Enterprise once again apologized for, a, or rather, quote, for the considerable anxiety and inconvenience that we have caused to those affected and the fans, unquote, that have always supported us through the news reports and his poor health last year. The agency also confirmed that they'll be standing behind him 100%, quote, so that he can continue to move forward with integrity as a person, as an actor, unquote. So the story, just to give you a rundown, exactly what happened. He went on break from public activities due to the physical and mental fatigue after Bunshun Online alleged that the voice actor and singer cheated on his wife, Lisa, with a female fan in her 20s who worked at a recording studio Posting photos of Suzuki and the fan coming out of a hotel together. Ye- oof. Big oof. He responded to claims later in the month, saying that he would like to sincerely apologize to everyone for the trouble caused by my irresponsible and uh, inappropriate behavior. Because of this, it was announced that Suzuki would not be reprising his roles in many anime, including Draken and Tokyo Revengers and Anno's Folded Gold and The Misfits of Demon King Academy. And, of course... It also goes into the uh, disbandment of old Codex. So, there you have it. So, that is exactly what happened with him and why things have been the way they are. So, I guess, I don't know if it's for the best. I'm sure, I hope someday. I've actually never heard of any of their songs because I don't know if it was 
maybe the theme songs they perform were like for anime shows that I have no interest in, like uh, Free. But maybe now it'd be time to go back and listen and see, you know, what I missed. But I'm hoping on one day they'll like reunite and release music again. But I'm pretty sure it, it was because of everything that's happened that it's pretty much too little, too late. But also, um, I think this is something that we've talked a bit about in the past. And I think between podcasts and on our blog posts, is that usually when you screw up in the eye of the Asian media, it's no return. You're like very likely not never to return again. So I know there was an actor who got ditched by a lot of people. So there, uh, he's a legendary actor. I don't know exactly. Uh, if you know who I'm talking about, then this, this is the person. So, this, uh, Japanese, uh, older Japanese actor, and I think he was known for, like, a lot of Yakuza-style roles, uh, you know, y- a lot of Yakuza movies, but he also, uh, provided a voice of a character in the, uh, Yakuza spinoff game Lost Judgment. So, if you remember that, he, uh, when he got in trouble, legal trouble, I think he got arrested. Uh, I don't know exactly what it was. I want to say like drug possession, drug possession or something. But because of that, they were like very quick to try to like you know any recent media of him they were trying to like get rid of. So the game Lost Judgment was one of them, and uh, the game was about to be released when that happened. So they basically delayed. They had to stop the game release. Uh, bef- no, they any games they sent to the stores, they had to basically recall them. And they had to recast the guy that did a voice of the character because of what he did. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, because of that, the game got delayed, I think, globally. But it's only by, like, maybe a few weeks. So, yeah. And then also, you, uh, I think we've also talked a bit about this in our first season. Uh, so, there's a, a going to Korea, though. We uh, talked about a legendary i guess at this point you consider him legendary but a lot of people if you actually went to korea and mentioned the fact that he was legendary they would definitely disagree with you but it was uh yu sung jun he uh was really popular in the late 90s and a lot of people looked up to him because you know he was that role model of that time in korea where you know you're you know fearless you're nothing to fear going into the 2000s but what ended his career was that he was accused of draft dodging so um when he was about to go into the army uh the day he was supposed to enlist he just apparently left the country and they asked him why why did he leave the country what was any reason for you to leave and so he when he came back to korea to say well they don't want you back anymore. You can just go and stay wherever you were. I think he was in the U.S. So, they basically didn't, like, give him a chance to... Exp- I think they gave him a chance to explain it itself, but they basically called him a coward and just said, you know, they banned him from his own home country. So, yeah, he is banned from South Korea. He was only allowed to come back to the U.S. Uh, I mean, to, sorry, to Korea for his funeral of his father, like, a couple of years later, but that was it. But right now he's an active uh, actor, and I think singer in China. But yeah, he's active in China because he really has nowhere to go. So even he's tried to like make a comeback in the Korean media, but they still will never. You know, that's really hard to forget something like that, considering they basically betrayed his country. And you know, they still have this. Even since the Korea War ended, they still have mandatory military enlistments because they're basically still at war you know between the north so yeah definitely uh that's hard to get out of so yeah so (laughs) when something like that happened well i guess draft uh, military drafts are kind of you know you don't really think about that in the u.s but like when it comes to drugs or just anything else like, let's say, I guess the most recent one, I know you're sick of hearing it, but I'm sorry when you use it as an example, the whole Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial that just, con- well, concluded, like, weeks ago, but people are still talking about it, so, like, that, that's up for debate, so, like, a lot of that stuff that Johnny Depp uh, did, like, or may have done is up to you, but 
And I'm going to try to, like, hold my opinion of the whole thing, but both of their careers at this point, you know, they're basically out of the job. I think Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, I think they actually lost uh, some deals because of all this, but I think mostly everyone is on Depp's side because just from, you know, based on what Amber Heard has said, it seems very suspicious, very sus, as we the cool kids call it nowadays. But also at the same time, the whole i the whole topic of just you know the whole uh what occurred between amber heard and johnny depp's relationship you know it's very you know you want to be on the side of amber heard but also it's johnny depp but like again that's another topic for a totally different format uh but yeah something like that like a trial like that basically their both careers are both both of the careers are ruined but i think johnny depp's fine like now and i think amber heard i don't know about her but i think even before this i think she was kind of unknown so i you know when you squint it feels like this whole thing might have been a uh you know a way to try to get her popularity up and then again like i said i don't really i shouldn't really say a whole, a whole lot about it but like it's up for debate on actually what happened so this is why it was so fascinating because like who is telling the truth right so but yeah if this happened like in korea or japan like i said both of the careers were been ruined um, but it seems like it's just another day in paradise. It's very weird, but you ho- I hope you understand what I'm saying. Uh, but yes, I hope you enjoyed uh, insights like these. But uh, that's all I have on um, Tatsuhisa Suzuki. But we are going to actually talk about some more cases of serious disrespect. So, Monster X recently had their north american or rather u.s tour their 2022 no limit u.s tour so they made a whole bunch of stops from the from basically from late may until early june so their first stop was in new york but they concluded uh in los angeles at the kia forum um but their third to last stop right after so actually they went to atlanta too and i'm like dang it it was like maybe a week after uh, MomoCon, but actually I saw Monster X twice in Atlanta too, so, but it was kind of, you know, with it, the way things are, it's kind of like, eh. But anyway, so anyway, going back to their third to last stop, uh, which was in Fort Worth, Texas, it was at the Dickies Arena, where um, things got weird. So, of course, actually, the Atlanta concert was actually memorable because I think there was some, like, really hardcore uh, Mon Babies there. And, of course, you know, they know their stuff. So, yeah, so Mon Babies in Atlanta had a great time. But, unfortunately, at Dickies Arena, it was actually a little weird. So, uh, just to go into detail of actually what heck going on. So, the article on Korea Boo is that Moss X was disrespected by the dicky serena staff and so just what do they mean by disrespected so it wasn't directly to masa x but still it's just their total okay so i guess just, just explain this as nice as i can i know i'm using this loosely um you know how you talk to someone that's very uh not very outsiderish uh so i guess what i meant to say so like if you explain k-pop to someone that doesn't have a t- complete grasp of the outside world. So when you talk about Korean pop music, you're probably going to explain it to someone that is going to say the wrong thing. And by the wrong thing, is actually getting the country of origin wrong. That's where I'm going to stop at. So this is actually what this is about. So I'm going to give you a warning. Uh, I guess a, a content warning that involves xenophobia. Uh, moving forward to this. So some of the um the uh hold on one moment I'm trying to read so there's a a few examples of exactly what happened at the uh, arena so basically everyone at the at the arena the staff they were incredibly rude to the point of like oh what's with these young whippersnappers here seeing all their K-pop and all their screaming and stuff why why am I here why am I working here. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, one of the reviews, I think it was like on a Google, yeah, it was a Google review for Dickie Serena. So someone wrote, 
The venue itself is excellent. It's well kept and easy to navigate, which I appreciate. The staff is very rude and condescending, though. I was seated on the second level and was told by a staff member who seemed like he couldn't care any less that I could not use the water fountain, which was 10 feet behind him and would have to circle to the other side to the second floor. I did so without question and didn't find a fountain there. When I was asked the staff in that direction, in that section, sorry, uh, where a water fountain was, as I was directed there, I was told that there wasn't one and should just buy water from the concessions by another employee who shockingly also spoke with the tone that said they also couldn't care any less. Nice venue of rude people. So they were given a run around because they didn't want to deal with all these young people. Huh. But, um, and then they had one other review that said that they just saw Monster X at the concert. Saw Monster X concert at the Dickey Serena and the venue was incredible. And the concert was amazing as well, but I specifically want to comment on the arena. As it so happens, K-pop fans are very vocal during the concert. And even with fans screaming and singing along the entire time, the music could be heard clearly. The acoustics in this building are exceptional. On top of that, the seats were comfortable, the bathrooms were nice, and there were plenty of them. The parking, garage, and arena was highly, uh, easily accessible, superb venue that I would highly recommend. Really looking forward to any other event there. Sans the staff, the event staff. <laughs> so apparently that was one positive experience about it. Maybe they just got lucky and didn't have any of the rude uh, encounters that, that many people have. Uh, so this one in particular was actually on the Facebook page. So, uh, the person, uh, wrote, I had a great time at the Fort Worth concert last night. I just wanted to share the unpleasant thing that happened as I was leaving Dickie's Arena. I left right before the encore since I had to drive home and don't see well at night and wanted to miss the traffic. And, uh... I'm just going to read it all. I'm not going to read the in-between set a Korea Boo has. But anyway, I was um, going out the south exit. As I was going out the south exit, there were three older Dickie staff. I greeted them and told them I f- felt slightly deaf because all of the screaming. The first one proceeded to say something like, You know they lip sync, right? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Uh, I told her that there, I was 100% sure they do not lip sync. Uh, just a little sidebar before I continue. So, yes, they actually freaking sing. Like, if you watch the music shows, they actually, you know, can dance and sing at the same time. It's amazing to watch. And you're missing out if you don't watch any of the music shows. Uh, Shiny in particular. I remember, Sh- I can never forget Shiny's performance. This was back, you know, when strong was still with us and they performed uh sherlock and i, I was that was my favorite performance of them considering how much physical movement is in that uh in the song and i'm like oh my gosh i love it uh but anyway moving on so i i was informed i was then informed that there was no way Someone can dance like that and sing at the same time. I explained how hard idols train to practice, uh, train and practice. Uh huh. The second lady said they can't speak English. And also, don't forget. So, if you are familiar with Master X already, I am actually speaks fluent English, and his brother actually, uh, I think he went to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. By the way, that's actually one of the things that's kind of like, oh yeah, so he came home. Uh. But I patiently explained that they all speak some English and that one of them, I am, is fluent. All of them have better English skills than my, uh, better English skills than my Korean skills. And just to end it all up, this whole fuck, uh, part of my language, this whole freaking ordeal with these ignorant staffers. The third woman then asked me if I knew they were from South Korea. WTF definitely very disrespectful but yeah even though it wasn't directly at them it was still ignorant i'm sorry that i know that's a little rough for but that whole uh exchange was very very ignorant so they're definitely disrespectful and of course everyone is kind of you know like <sighs> of course i'm I'm hoping that they got reprimanded for none because even people were saying i called the uh arena to complain about this and i felt personally insulted and disrespected 
And not to mention embarrassed. Because, you know, this is in Texas. Just think about that. I'm not going to... I'm trying not to journalize, but... Texas, is, you know, is just not the greatest place for a lot of things. So, I'm just going to leave it at that. So... You can see how angry I am at this, so I'm glad that that's all of the article that you had to listen to. So, thank you for listening to my rants. But um, I will uh, say this though. So, uh, I feel like I got some more stories. Actually, no, I don't. I will not say anything because I thought I had something like this. But if I did, I probably talked about it, or will have talked about it in a Kari Train episode at some point after <laughs> recording this. So. If I ever uh, come across it, I, I'll mention it. Because I've been to over 20 K-pop concerts in the past 10 years. So I've been going, well, it'll be 10 years come this November when I... Uh, that'll be the 10 year anniversary since I went to go see Big Bang in New Jersey. But I know I had like a few stories of people being ignorant because they're seeing a uh, K-pop group. Uh, you know, and then they also refer to him as someone from a different country. Uh, um, but yeah, I'm not gonna get into that just for laughs. I'm not gonna get into that, but uh, yeah. So you you get the idea. But anyway, that's it for that. But we got one more news story to talk about, and this is something that I kind of mentioned briefly. I think at one point during the stream or anything. But yeah, this is very interesting to talk about, and I talked about this one. Uh. Well, the person talking about it, I talked about her before, but we were about to talk about her again with another video she did. So we have talked about this YouTuber before. It's not about her, but it's about a video she did that we want to share with you all. So we talked about her in a blog post about AKB48. So this YouTuber in question is uh, Ploopy678. Uh, her real name is Evangeline Pang. But she talks about a lot of K-pop stuff. So she uh, originally started with dance covers of a lot of K-pop songs, but she normally uh, likes to do deep dives of a lot of uh, K-pop bands and, you know, uh, concepts and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, she's really interesting to watch. I recommend you go check her out. I really... Everything she does is entertaining, but she doesn't do just K-pop, but she does, like, other Asian idol uh stories as well like there was one that's actually a little bit uh i probably shouldn't mention it but there was one of a uh, incident involving a japanese uh i guess one of those uh, indie japanese idols that almost uh had uh unfortunate uh that could have been fatal could have had a fatal incident with a uh so-called fan of hers but she did that as well but she also did one uh, as of recording, she did one about uh, this concept group, uh, or rather this group that likes to rely on concepts that makes people angry, or what they call outrage marketing, <laughs> but uh, I think it was Six Bomb, that's what it was, but anyway, yes. So, this story in particular was something she, I think, covered like a month or two ago, and this is actually something that's already known to a few uh, people that have been into K-pop for a very long time, including myself, especially if it was covered in a, a K-drama. So, um, it's involving H.O.T., High Five a Teenager, and Seskis. So, Seskis, uh, they were, both of them, H.O.T. and Seskis, they were uh, the top K-pop uh, boy bands in the late 90s so hot i think they debuted in 95 and 96 and chess keys about a year later so sex keys in particular they had a huge rivalry between hot and uh if you remember if you ever watched the k drama reply 1997 that was actually a huge topic <laughs> in that but just the reply series is a little refresher um Reply 1997 in particular, they covered everything that happened in Korea in 1997 leading up into the early 2000s. So, like, uh, one of the main characters, she was a huge fan of H.O.T. And, of course, uh, it came to that point where she went to their concert and she had that run-in with the Shisky's fans. But they, <laughs> the way they made the scene was very intense. So, uh, 
Everyone was standing out in the rain. Uh, HOT, they wore white as their fan colors, and Siskis wore yellow. So you had a sea of white and yellow, and they're wearing all their ponchos, and then they're basically mean mugging each other. And then at one point, they're, you know, swearing each other, you know, calling names, and then a huge fight breaks out eventually. And then, you know, everyone's like, cut it out, please, just cut it out. <laughs> but this actually happened. So, of course, for them to do that scene. Uh, you know, it actually happened, you know, for a show like that. <laughs> but, um, like, even a lot of the year-end re- uh, award shows they went on. They, uh, it was intense, too. Like, the first award show they went in- went on, uh, I think Chesky's won. And then on another show, H.O.T. won. And then on another show, uh, both groups won because they didn't want to deal with that BS. <laughs> from either group but the biggest twist of them off so one of the other i guess for their trying to get in for the next um i guess win for either group at this point one group would either take on like one group or the other will take home their third win at this rate um it was actually that wasn't the case so in a huge twist was actually a ballad singer that won. <laughs> so instead of giving the, uh, the war to Isra Tirsiski, who was a ballad singer, and shoot, his name escapes me for uh, at the moment. I think he's well known. Shoot, like I feel bad for forgetting that, but of course, I'm ballad's not my thing. But yeah, he's really well known. I think he's so active to this day. But I think that was like his first single. I think that came out, so that's why it was very memorable. But they just basically didn't want to give the award to. Uh, anyone associated with H.O.T. or Seskis, because, like, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> That's so funny. So you can either give them both the award or none at all. Give it to someone else. So that was hilarious. But <laughs> anyway, she, uh, going back to Ploopy678, she did a really extensive job, a really good job chronicling some of the other offense that uh, Reply 1997 didn't cover, like, uh, a school... Uh, I think it was like a school event that involved uh, Shesky's or a Shesky's themed event or something. But the mistake was that apparently the whole school is dominated by Club H.O.T. or Club White. I think whatever uh, H.O.T. fandom went by back in the day. But yes, it was quite something and it's definitely worth a watch. I totally recommend you check that out. It's, it will be in the show notes, but be sure to check out her YouTube channel. It's... uh. Ploopy678, if you search for it on YouTube, but her URL is something else. But uh, it's totally different from what uh, her actual uh, name that go- she goes by. But definitely check her out. So, uh, her- all of her videos entertain. Be sure to hit her, uh, give her a subscribe as well. She does have a Patreon too, if you enjoy it that much. Be sure to support her as well. But yeah, so those were K pop fan wars back in the day. But just like now, you see how things are. It's just insane, especially with uh, BTS. I remember we talked about that in the last episode. We were talking about all the annoying K-pop fandoms. So this was like the original annoying K-pop fandom. So you only had two to choose from, but now you have like at least two dozen to deal with. Uh, But I don't think it will be ever... I mean, I guess if you squint, it's kind of at the same level as it was back then, but not so much now. It's just more on a global scale. (laughs) But yeah, this is definitely something to check out but anyway that is it for this episode thank you all so much for listening to episode 33 and thank you all again so much for your patience as we release episodes we're slightly off schedule but hopefully these episodes will be released in batches so that way we can get back on schedule and talk about what we love the most but of course it's another thing too we're kind of juggling news articles too so by the time you hear this episode maybe something else big will have happened Especially with Anime Expo just around the corner, since that's what we talked about at the beginning of the episode. But yeah, definitely a huge episode to look forward to very soon. But uh, to keep in touch after our streams, after our episodes, or in between episodes, rather, be sure to hit up our Discord. You can find our infight link at sentakumedia.com slash Discord. And that will give you the invite link to get into uh, our server. But also don't forget our socials, which is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We're at Sentaku Media. 
But also don't forget our YouTube channel, which is Sentaku Chan, in which you'll be able to hear episodes, previous episodes of the podcast on there as well. But also don't forget to watch us on Twitch, where we are currently playing Yakuza 0 for our featured game night. Uh, we stream three, uh, rather six times a month, except for the last week of the month. But uh, to catch up on our schedule, be sure to hit our schedule tab on the Twitch page or follow us on our socials to find the schedule for the current month. And until next time, so long.